Musnica is a small town in the vicinity of Vilnius, Lithuania, located right next to Gernave, the former city capital of Lithuania. Although it is the end of April, this winter was so long that there is still a lack of greenery. The book The Shtetl of Musnik, the story of Zilba family and their descendants, was written by a descendant of this big and honorable family, the well-known public figure in the South African Republic, Lazar Sidelsky's son, Dov Barry Sidelsky, who now lives in Jerusalem. Through the internet searching on Jewish Gen, I contacted Milton Blackstone, who had family who lived in Musninka and he provided me with the testimony about the fate of the Vilkomir region of Lithuania, which was provided by Reuben Kronik, Sarah Kronik, and Rachel Kronik. Another source of valuable information was Irgun Yotzei Lita in Tel Aviv, the organization of the immigrants from Lithuania in Tel Aviv and they provided me with a wonderful article, My Town, Musnik and Its Synagogues, by Chaya Berzakait. It's the most beautiful article about the synagogues and the Jews who lived in Muslimkai. We are here with two reputable ladies who are teachers and ethnologists, Filomena Vychakauskina and Marita Galvosena. They corresponded with Dov Sidelsky for about 10 years, and the material they have collected about Musninke and the pre-war Jewish community has greatly contributed to the book. The village of Musninke was first mentioned in the 14th century, the manor in the 1507, the church in 1522. We will tell more about the synagogues a bit later. Now we would like to say a few words about the town itself. One of the most well-known sites in Musnika is the Queen of Poland and Grand Duchess of Lithuania Barbaros Chapel, the only construction of the Musnika manor that has been included in the list of cultural heritage. This saved it while other parts of the manor were barbarously demolished. The brick wing of the manor was destroyed at the end of the Soviet rule. A similar fate would have awaited the heritage of the Jewish community which used to live here before the Second World War, if it weren't for the hard-working and decent people who bought the buildings from Holocaust survivors, took care of them and saved at least part of those Jewish buildings that clearly stand out from the general town's view. The Jews of Musniki were usually engaged in small-scale trade with local Christians. There were also large-scale tradesmen among them who exported crops, chicken and timber. Jews often worked as craftsmen too. There were Jewish tailors, blacksmiths, cobblers, tinsmiths, glassmakers, furnace repairers and others. Unlike Jews from other parts of Lithuania, the Jews of Musniki were not evicted from the town during the First World War. However, once Lithuania regained its independence and Vilnius became a part of Poland, the economic and social status of Jews started to deteriorate rapidly. Even under such circumstances, according to a survey carried out by the Lithuanian government, in 1931 the town had three haberdasheries, three kerosene shops, two wool carding mills and a brickyard. All of these businesses belonged to Jews. In 1937 there were 15 craftsmen in the town, four butchers, two tailors, two textile dyers, two blacksmiths, two cobblers, a furnace repairer, a glassmaker and a barber. The community had a Jewish school and a number of religious and social organizations. There were youth movements in the town, including Maccabi and Hashomer Hatzair. In 1923, 380 out of 556 residents of Musninke were Jews. For comparison, today there is a little over 400 people living in Musninke, and not a single one of them is a Jew. Besides two shops and several large farms, there are no businesses left here. However, with the help of good people, memories have remained. An ethnologist, a former teacher, now a pensioner, and an active member of the culture-cherishing community which functions in Musnika Filomena Vychakauskina, 
corresponded with the book's author Dov Sidelsky for many years and knows nearly everything about the families that used to live here. The elders of Musniki know the Zilba name, said Mrs. Filomena. There is a large, beautiful wooden house standing here. In 1950, some kind people obtained the house from the Soviet authorities and renovated it. The Zilba family was wealthy. They earned their living by selling timber. They owned a forest plot, cut down trees and rafted the timber to Yonova down the nearest river. They also cut boards and transported them by train to a processing factory in Konos. The Zilba family left Musniki before the war and the house was taken up by the Lunin family. The husband's name was Shlomo. When the Germans occupied the country, he went into hiding, but after a while he was found and shot together with his parents. According to archival documents, members of the Lunin family were among 180 Jews of Musniki who were shot during the war. Although no one remembers the lovely large family which once lived here, people still call it the Lunin's or Zilber's house. Unfortunately, the synagogues no longer exist, only this photo remained. The Bet Midrash, a house of study, was smaller and plainer than the synagogue. The smaller part of the building served as the rabbi's home, and behind it there was a place where the shamash, the candle which lit the menorah, and the mikveh, a ritual bath, were kept. In 1950, a pharmacy was opened in the building. Since then, the house has been reconstructed by the government. The pharmacy was run by the pharmacist and his wife, who was a teacher. Later, the pharmacist's son obtained the house, remade the roof, changed the windows and arranged a beautiful garden. Nobody lives in this house any longer. It used to belong to the wolf family who sold pies and cookies they baked themselves. This house was once owned by the Tides family. It has not changed at all and now accommodates a shop. Incidentally, back then there used to be a shop in the house too. This house belonged to the Orchik family. It has not changed much. It used to be a place where bread was baked and sold. Hanna, the daughter of the family, moved to Riga, Latvia, where she got married. In 1946 she came back and sold the house. Old woman lives here to this day. This house has been renovated recently, that's why it looks so decent. The Karchmer family used to live in it. A copy of the house was built in the Lithuanian Ethnographic Museum. There were two wool carding machines owned by Jews in this house. People used these machines up until 1990. Nobody remembers the owners' names. Some of the Jews took up high government posts during the Soviet regime and managed to live together with the government officials. Still, not all of them managed to run to the Soviet Union. Some were caught by Germans. On June 24th, Tuesday evening, the Germans came to Musniki. The fate of the Jews who survived the Holocaust is very different. Dov Sidelsky, the author of the book about Musniki and his wife Naomi, have never been to his ancestors' homeland. Besides, Jews do not live here anymore. However, an immense work lies behind writing the book about his former homeland. Today Musnike is a home for another generation of other people. For now, the acquaintance with Mr. Sidelsky has developed into an interesting cooperation full of big hopes. The culture-cherishing community of the village has already translated the book into Lithuanian. This and further cooperation will be discussed in the future.
Today, the descendants of this big and honorable family are scattered around the world. The natives of Musnike glorify the South African Republic just like thousands of other Litvaks glorify other countries in different parts of the globe. The South African attorney Lazo Sidelski, who passed away in 2002, and his family made significant breaches in the color bar in South Africa's legal profession. And by employing and mentoring the young Nelson Mandela, he contributed to more widespread change grounded in the rule of law. In his autobiography, Long Walk to Freedom, Mandela noted that it was Jewish firm and in my experience I have found Jews to be more broad-minded than most whites on issues of race and politics.